Welcome everyone to build 48. This very well may be the last Case Labs SMA8 build that we ever do. These cases are so highly sought after still, and they're few and far between. It's sad to see such high demand for something which is no longer available. We're always being asked for Case Labs cases and case components. This I would say is kind of a workstation build because you can see the drive capacity. We have added the two drive bays in the front and they're hot swap for up to 10 3.5 inch drives. It's also going to have a RAID card, but at the same time, the customer wanted custom paint, which goes towards kind of more elegant aesthetics. And so we wanted something to tie in those aesthetics with the more practical workstation look. And so also due to the challenges with the layout of this build caused by the drive bays, where they cramp up everything and push it in towards the core components, we wanted to do some distribution plates. So. We've designed a custom mid plate distribution plate and also a vertical one, which are really specifically for this layout because this layout is quite different, quite unique due to the drive bays. So, you know, they're kind of for aesthetics, but they're also reducing the size and complexity of the loop, the amount of tube that we need to use and helping us work with the smaller space. But this is a huge case, so there is still a lot of space. And so we wanted to use traditional pump res combos, Proteum, to help to fill out this space and kind of balance out the aesthetics. But we're definitely going to need to put a shroud on the drive bays because the side and the back of them is ugly and we also need a place to mount the Proteum pump res combos because they're going to be mounted facing in the other direction because there's not much space between the end of the GPUs and the drive bays. I wanted to show a little bit of what is involved in making a custom piece like this. This is really quite a simple piece. It's just a two-sided panel that's going into the case. It's a shroud. It's also a mounting system for the Proteum combos. But this is only a snapshot of the amount of time that goes in, all of the filing, cleaning up the cuts. It's extremely difficult to justify building something like this on a machine because then you have to do CAD. Then you have to use a big and expensive machine, maybe a laser or a router. And the machine time is expensive. If you want to go to factories somewhere like China, you know, where things are cheaper, they are certainly not interested in producing one-offs or even low numbers. You're stuck with MOQs. So the only way to do things like this really is by hand. And it's quite time consuming. A panel like this, it takes a couple of hours to make. And this is just a, a small snapshot of the part of each of the processes which go into making a panel like this just so that you know for your own modding what might be involved if you plan on doing something like this. So you can see how much the distribution plates are cleaning up the loop. There's only really five short runs left to do to and from the core components once they're installed. If you take a look at some of the other Case Labs builds that we've done, specifically the SMA8, TH10 and THW10, due to the size of the cases, there's some really long tube runs that you just can't avoid. So certainly enjoying the distribution plates in this build. 
Now some of the core components haven't yet been decided on for this build. The CPU is probably going to be the 10900K. Not yet sure about the motherboard. It's certainly going to be Asus ROG, but it's going to be a high-end build. We have two RTX 2080 Ti's, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB, a Corsair AX 1200i. The custom paint is Volcano Orange. It's a custom special effect that we do with DNA products, DNA Silver Flare metallic base coat and DNA candy orange. And the clear coat is custom clear. And it's two tone with a 2K matte black. I quite often run drainage systems off the Proteum combos, but for this build, I definitely didn't want them in the main compartment because it is cramped enough. And also then one wouldn't be at the lowest point, the one for the GPU loop. So I've moved them both into the lower compartment and one just drops directly through the distribution plate for the CPU loop. And the one for the GPU loop is going to be in behind the power supply on the back of the 560 millimeter radiator. So both certainly at the lowest point, but the GPU loop, you're going to have to remove the power supply, which means unplugging the cables and undoing four screws. It takes a couple of minutes and a drainage system is not something you really need to access very often.